Hey guys, welcome to the scale. So today we're going to be looking at perplexity labs once again with five distinct use cases. We're going to be doing constant briefs similar to that of Neuron Writer. And we're trying to create keyword visualizations. I'll show you three different app ideas and all the prompts used are going to be shared for free in my free ChatGPT library link down below. But first things first, let's talk about what Perplexity Lab is. Perplexity, Perplexity Labs is a productivity tool that tackles complex projects on your behalf. You can do anything from code generation and execution to reports, document creation, spreadsheet development. You can visualize your data. You can create simple web applications. You can organize, visualize, and export your assets. The way it works is pretty simple. You submit your page idea, then labs conduct deep web search to gather information. Everything is being analyzed and structured appropriately. Then Perplexity Labs creates necessary code for your specific project needs. It produces various multimedia elements like charts, images and documents and other files. It acts as a web developer, so it builds interactive applications as well. And basically it organizes and simplifies everything and you can deploy everything or download everything at will. These are some of the best use cases that are available online. Financial analysis, so create an interactive personal finance dashboard to track my monthly expenses, savings, and investment growth. So just for fun, I ask Perplexity to create this beautiful dashboard comparing the performance of S&P 500 to Bitcoin across five years. And you can see you don't need to be a data scientist or a trader to see that Bitcoin has actually outperformed S&P 500 by a lot. So S&P grew by 91%, whereas Bitcoin grew by over 1000%. And this is your summary statistics. This is volatility, which is to be expected and some of the key insights. So you can definitely, definitely use Perplexity as a financial advisor of sorts. Now you can do travel planning. The example given is I need a seven day Japan itinerary covering Tokyo and Kyoto. Create an interactive travel guide with a day by day plans, accommodation options, my see attractions and a budget tracker. Of course, Perplexity excels with data analysis. So you can do something like analyze the attached sales data from my Shopify store, create a dashboard that shows seasonal trends, top selling products, customer demographics, and shipping and logistics patterns. And you can finally create something like a mini map, build a retirement calculator web app that allows users to input their current age, retirement age savings, and expected growth rate to visualize their projected retirement income. And there are heaps of other examples as well. Additional practical applications include flashcard generation for students, resume analysis, market research, legal compliance checklists, marketing campaign development, staff scheduling, interactive educational content, and product comparison and feature analysis tool. There are, of course, strengths and limitations. So what Perplexity Lab Excel says is complex data analysis, research-intensive projects, interactive tools, time-intensive tasks, visualization creation, and multi-component deliverables. However, it kind of sucks at complex enterprise applications. So it's not going to be able to use different APIs, at least not right now, act as an agent that calls on uh, different apps. It's not suitable for commercial image generation. It does occasionally hallucinate data. It cannot connect to live data feeds or APIs without menu intervention. And some of the best use cases uh, that I found is to follow this two-step procedure. And this is what I recommended in my video. So step number one would be learn all you can about topic. The first step prompts perplexity labs to research thoroughly and gather comprehensive information. And people in my school community actually suggest looking at very recent sources. And this is applicable to both perplexity labs, GenSpark. So make sure that you're using recent data only. And once perplexity labs has learned everything, you go for step two. Now create an interactive web app. Uh, and this second app directs labs to transform that knowledge into a specific deliverable with interactive functionality. This is the prompt template and I will save this uh, report uh, and put it under the video so you can use it. It's very useful. And now let's go use case by use case. The first use case is uh, that of a content brief. So create a multimedia content brief similar to NeuroWriter and Surfer SEO for an article about does agility writer pass AI detection, including a competitive analysis of top five ranking pages, H2H3 structure, primary secondary keyword tables, 
export sources to site, topic cluster visualizations, and this and that. And as you can see, it went ahead and did something very, very special. So it looked at everything. It looked at keyword opportunities inside of the cluster, which is the seed keyword. Pulled out uh, very recent data. I think this is data synthesis. So this data did not exist before about agility writer and how it performs against various a detection tools. It then went ahead, suggested a perfect quote unquote content structure with H1, H2. It looked into the topical cluster, so what subtopics to touch upon within your article. It prioritized different FAQs and it just gave a bunch, a bunch of different suggestions. So for the actual content brief, I had to go into assets. This is basically everything that Perplexity Labs produced as it was calculating. Snippets of code. This is a downloadable infographics that you can use. Different calculations. And here was the actual content brief. This is actually extremely robust. Executive summary, target keyword search intent, competitive analysis, content gaps, keywords, the actual structure of the article, export sources to site, FAQs, Content requirements, as far as target word count, reading level, tone, internal links, external links, meta title, meta description, and content optimization notes. This is amazing. And then you can go to your writing tool of choice. Uh, for me, it's been Genspark lately. And you just copy this over and create an amazing, amazing article. So once again, this uh, prompt is going to be my free ChatGPT library. Links are below. Next use case is that of a two-step prompt. You first ask Perplexity Labs to do research something, and then you actually use that. So this is the Google AI Overview Optimizer. So I prompted Google Labs to learn everything there is to know about optimizing for AI reviews, and it did that. And let's just choose this article, for example. And this is a perfect example of what we are doing in our school community. This is a GenSpark article, a one-click article with audio. Quick navigation, amazing banners, videos, embeds, screenshots, multiple CDAs. Just look at the CDAs alone. This one here, <laughs> and this one here, actual screenshots. And not many people realize that this was all done in one shot. And there is no other AI writing tool on the planet Earth that does that. And we are capable of doing that with just a single prompt inside of our school community. So let's just grab the URL. Let's paste this in. Analyze URL. Okay. And it gave me 55 slash needs improvement optimization score. It says that the skin of markup is not detected. It says it's missing H1. I'd better attend to this. <laughs> and just gave me a couple of clear indications of what to do and the priorities in order to get into the AI overview. So this is tool number one. Tool number two follows similar logic. This is based on the EAT as it pertains to the article itself. Not So not site-wide. We copy the article. We paste this in. And it's going to read my page and look at how well I'm doing with my EEAT and it gave me an overall score of 84. It said that I'm showing expertise, experience, then I don't have author credentials, which is true. Authoritativeness is lacking, industry recognition shown, lacks that. I guess I could do better with that. And these optimization suggestions split into high priority, medium priority and low priority. So this is amazing. And it even gave me a uh, EAT factor matrix to really pay attention to what's really important. Next up is the article Reading Pattern Analyzer, and I don't think anything like this exists. This is going to be a little bit on a technical side. So there are no reading patterns like the F pattern, the Z pattern, the layer cake pattern, and stuff like that. And it actually said primary pattern should be Z pattern. My readability grade should be grade 7. And it even gave me suggestions as far as content structure, readability, and stuff like that. So very, very useful. Now, last use case is data visualization. So I have fed Perplexity Labs a short CSV file with some keywords and asked it to create an interactive SEO dashboard. And it did that. It introduced some filters. So I'm able to filter by medium, high, and low. I can filter by search volume. I can filter by primary topic. So we did some rudimentary clustering. And this basically acts as my guidance as far as which keywords to go for. So it shows me topic distribution, competition level distribution, search volume distribution. Again, this is based just on the 10 keywords because I was running low on time. But you can fit this uh, with your 100, 200, 300 words. And it's just going to do the same actionable dashboard that will help you prioritize your keywords and decide on the topical clusters.
Once again, all these prompts are going to be in my free ChatGPT library down below. I will also share this Genspark guide. And again, if you want to write one-click articles like these ones, amazing, amazing articles, go and join my school community, which is booming with insights, reactions, suggestions, and stuff like that. Hope this was helpful, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.